We are back, people. We are back with the 2021 NFL predictions, and we move on to the AFC North. You're not going to want to miss this. And now the AFC North. What a stacked division. Storylines running wild. Baltimore Ravens getting some more weapons for former MVP Lamar Jackson. The Browns aren't going anywhere. One of the most talented rosters in the league. You've got the uh, the Cincinnati Bengals adding talent, getting Joe Burrow some help. Goodness gracious, get that man some help. And you got the Pittsburgh Steelers. What the heck happened to the Pittsburgh Steelers? These guys are just a few years removed of having the, what, the best running back, the best receiver. Big Ben was much better. He's a little bit younger. Duh. But, and we're going to start things out with them. We're going to start things out with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Leave cover, put that vest in an overcoat Never need a holly, bro, they drowning in my ego I invest, slide, roll it, tie the rest to the lower row She lick it, drip it, flip it to the peak, you know <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! I could not find a highlight for this Steelers team last year Fairly boring to watch, although they I just hope you guys like that video, man I, That video gets me every time No matter how many times I watch it, it's still gonna be great Those Steelers last year Although they finished 12 and 4, good record. They started out 11 and 0, and the offense just died at the end of the year, right? 24th ranked offense in the league, okay? The third ranked defense. This defense is very, very stacked. We'll hit on that in a minute. They, 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 they out with offensive coordinator Randy Fitcher. I, I, I hope I, I got that name down right. Andy Fitcher, you're out. Matt Canada, you're in. I don't know which way I pointed first. You're out, and he's in. Matt Canada, LSU fans will remember him. Uh, and they probably won't be too fond of him because what the heck kind of offense was he running over there at LSU when he was there? I don't know, but he was out pretty quick. But then he did good things at Maryland. Then he made it to the NFL's quarterback's coach for Big Ben. And under Big Ben, as, as Big Ben's quarterback coach, no quarterback in the league got the ball out faster than Big Ben with 2.3 seconds snap to throw. So I think you're going to continue to see that. Uh, they, this team also had the 32nd ranked rushing offense in the league last year. That's not the Steelers offense we know. I do know it's 2021 and everybody likes to pass the ball, but you will not be successful without a running game. And they're going to have to do a better job of that. And that's going to be hard to do because they lost a lot of key pieces on offense. But the defense is stout. 35.1% pressure rate from that defense, highest in the NFL. They gave up a total of 1,382 yards after the catch, the lowest in the NFL. This team is stacked. This team is absolutely stacked. Not a lot of big moves in free agency, but they definitely lost some guys in free agency. James Conner, gone to Arizona. Linebacker Bud Dupree, gone to Tennessee. Marquise Pouncey, center for Big Ben, like his whole career. Retired. He gone. Alejandro Villanueva leaves in free agency, signs with the Baltimore Ravens. That's an interesting one to watch when they play each other. That's going to get real chippy. That's going to get real chippy. If that what an interesting, what an interesting rivalry to trade. I mean, wow, what a great rivalry. In the draft, they do address the running back need with Connor gone. Now the Le'Veon Bell's not there, or has been gone. Right? They haven't really had that. Najee Harris, linebacker out of Alabama. If there is a linebacker that's supposed to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's freaking Najee Harris. What a monster. That should definitely improve the run game. Now, in the second round, they go the tight end, Pat Freermuth, uh, out of Penn State. I don't, I, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not an expert, but, you know, ha if I were an expert and I had an opinion on this as an expert, I would say that's not a very good draft pick. I would say that's not a very good draft pick. They got Eric Ebron that's already there. Uh, he's a freak athlete. Um, he does drop a few balls, but he was pretty good for him last year, if I if I remember correctly. Don't have stats on that, by the way. But I mean, what happened to the Steelers team? This guy's got the best running back, the best receiver. Big Ben was a little bit younger and better. What happened to these guys? I think this is the year, like you see, like a rapid decline. I predict this team to go 6-11, last in the AFC North, and it possibly could be worse. These guys... Hot take, or you know, you want me to give you a hot take? These guys might have a top 10 pick, but I'm going to go with 6 and 11 because I think that defense is just too good with TJ Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick, Joe Hayden. They've got a really good secondary, and they've got some really, really big pieces on that. It's going to be quite 
quite an interesting thing to see. If, if they have such a good defense and they just don't get any wins. Sorry, Pittsburgh. Sorry. Next up in the AFC North, we have your Cincinnati Bengals. Here comes Bosa. Here comes the quarterback, Burrow. Looking for a block, and he got it up in the front by Hopkins into the end zone. Touchdown. What a scamper. Called his own. And boy, oh boy, does it get hyped with Jamar Chase coming to meet the man you just saw, Joe Burrow and his Bengals in Cincinnati. This team was 4-11-1 last year. They were not good. Joe Burrow gets hurt in week 11. Nasty injury. This guy's throwing balls right now. This guy's throwing balls. It's 7-34 on a Tuesday. I bet you he's throwing, throwing balls in Cincinnati right now. Somehow. He's coming back with a vengeance. They did have the 29th ranked offense and the 26th ranked defense. They were not a very good football team. No team in the league was throwing the ball as much as the Cincinnati Bengals leading up to week 11. With the worst offensive line in the league! I think that Zach Taylor, I believe that's his name, that could be completely wrong. I could be totally off on that. They've got to find a balance with the run. And it's going to help with Joe with Joe Mixon coming back, hopefully full-time. Maybe this guy can get 16 games. And because he is a special running back, he is really good. The Bengals threw for 200, over 208 yards one time after the Burrow injury in Week 11. It's vital that this guy plays every single game for the Bengals for the next 10 years. They had the third lowest third down conversion rate in the NFL, 36.2%. That's really low. There's got to be a balance there. They, they, they just abandoned the run game when Burrow was playing for them. They were just like, we're going to throw it every time. And to be honest with you, for as bad as that offensive line was, I've never seen anybody that calm under such an atrocious offensive line. Can you imagine what David Carr would have felt like? And it's no, I'm not hating on David Carr. Anyways, we got to continue. Free agency, they did make a lot of additions to depth, their defense especially. They're bringing two cornerbacks. Chidobe a woozy? Boy, these names are getting me, man. Eli Apple? I mean, he's talented, driving the Saints fans nuts, but good luck to him. I hope he has a good career in Cincy. Uh, defensive end, another Saint, baby. Let's go. Trey Hendrickson making that money. I think it's going to be very interesting. Trey Hendrickson flourished with the defensive talent that we had in New Orleans. Now, he's going to be the guy getting the chips, getting the double teams. He's got his work cut out for him in Cincy. Mike, cornerback Mike Hilton. And off of the tackle, Riley Reef. They did bring it off of the tackle. It's probably going to be starting. I think right tackle for them. It's going to be very interesting to see that. They did lose Geno Atkins, Giovanni Bernard going to Tampa Bay, AJ Green going to Arizona. Arizona has a lot of veteran talent over there. And John Ross leaving for the Giants. Now, in the draft, they definitely addressed their biggest need. I don't know. Maybe their biggest need was off of the tackle. But they addressed the second biggest need with Jamar Chase out of LSU reunited. And it feels so good. Those guys are going to be a, a problem for teams. That th Those receivers are going to be a problem. T. Higgins, Jamar Chase. I mean, this is very interesting. Uh, they also, in the second round, drafted Jackson Carmen, Clemson, offensive guard, all 6'5", 330 pounds of that boy. I mean, come on. That's what you need. That's what you need. They still address two of their needs on the line. They, they can't be any worse on the offensive line. They can't be any worse. The next three picks go to defense. Defensive end, defensive end, and defensive tackles. Tyler Shelvin out of LSU. Six foot three, 346 pounds. That guy's going to make the field this year. I don't know if he starts over whoever they got in front of him, but he's going to make the field. The Bengals have allowed opponents to rush for over 2,000 yards in each season since 2017. So they use three of their first five draft picks on defense, and they pick up all of those cornerbacks and everybody I said in free agency. I think the Bengals are going to be much better, especially if they can protect Burrow. Just any any better. I think they're going to make a huge leap this season, and I think that they still have a losing record, but seven and ten, and finish third in the AFC North. Let's go, Joe! Let's go! We are only in the second division. Of this season prediction, there's no way my voice is gonna last because I'm that freaking hype. 
about this. And now we continue on to the Cleveland Browns. Continues to build on both sidelines. 20 straight completions from Mayfield. Looking for more. Taking a shot. Up the far side. It's caught. Miraculous catch. Let's go. The Cleveland Browns finished with an 11 and 5 record last year and took a tough loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a game they told I mean they almost won that. We almost had the Browns and the Bills in the AFC Championship game. We almost had the Browns and the Bills in the AFC Championship game last year. Can you imagine what that would have been like? Bills Mafia, the Browns Nation, the Dog Pound or whatever they call themselves over there in Cleveland. Wow, they had the 16th offense though. I feel like a team with this this kind of this much talent on their roster should have better than the 17th ranked offense. I understand OBJ wasn't there. They had the 17th ranked defense as well. This is we thought their roster was loaded two years ago, especially last year. This is one of the most talented rosters on paper, for whatever that's worth, than anybody else in the league. Third rushing in the league offensively and ninth against the rush defensively. These guys are like driven. I mean, they are well disciplined, a well disciplined and a well oiled machine. This team knows how to get it done. Only 13 running backs in the NFL faced eight or more defenders in the box over 30% of the time. Okay, so let that sink in and rewind because I'm not saying all that again. And two of those running backs, Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. They know they're running on them. They know everybody knows it. They're going to run the ball down your throat. Which is why Mayfield and company have to have a better season throwing the ball. I mean, they just do. They just got to be more efficient passing the ball. There's no way around it. OBJ ought to be healthy, hopefully. They got the best offensive line in the league. Everybody knows it. 24th in the league in passing. Step a game up. Step a game up, Baker. Um, They got some studs defensively. Uh, especially if they get Greedy Williams, healthy, Grant Delpit coming back. What a terrible injury he had. Free agency, they didn't waste any time or money. Jadavian Clowney, Troy Hill, and John Johnson the third. That is the biggest pickup in free agency um, that, uh, that that, that I, I can go with. Right? I mean, John Johnson the third, that's a pro bowl. That's an all-pro safety right there, I think. They did lose Sheldon Richardson, <laughs> Sheldon Richardson and Olivier Vernon. I don't think those really matter too much now with the addition of J Jadavion Clowney. In the draft, they address they address defense again. Like they're looking to have the number one defense in the league. I guarantee it. They're looking for it. Now I don't guarantee they will. Greg Newsom the second or junior, as some say, out of Northwestern, one of the best cornerbacks coming out of this past year's draft, and they got the steal of the draft in the second round with a linebacker I wanted out of Notre Dame, Jeremiah. Jeremiah Awosu Koromora. I'm pretty sure I got that name right the second time. I messed up the first time. Uh, and I, I, you saw you saw the highlight earlier in the video. T, not T Higgins. Rashard Higgins. Rashard Higgins. Very quietly last season at 599 yards and four touchdowns. 16.2 yards per catch. He doesn't get enough credit. He stepped up in OBJ's absence. And I think with him, Jarvis Higgins can totally still prosper. Even though you got to get the ball into, your, into the hands of, of OBJ, one of your talented guys. You know, Denzel, this secondary, Denzel Ward, I said Troy Hill earlier in free agency, Greedy Williams as your slide, maybe even your second guy, John Johnson the third, Grant Delpit, if back healthy, can come in and play that true strong, strong safety inside the box role for that defense. We saw his senior year at LSU, he wasn't so good out in space and he missed on some tackles, but if you can put that guy up in the box, and use his physicality and use him for the blitzes to go with Jadavian Clowney and company. Miles Garrett. What? That this team is something to watch out for, and they're coming. And they're coming for Baltimore. That being said, I don't have them winning the division. I got them going 12 and 5, though. And second place in the AFC North. And last and certainly not least is the Baltimore Ravens. Third down and three. Jackson has all day. Looking deep for Hollywood Brown again. He's got it. Brown off to the races. And he stays on his feet. Touchdown. And we have got to see more of what I'm, well, I'm pointing at my window right now, but I'm, I'm really pointing backwards at the highlight you just saw. We've got to see more of that next season. 
They went 11-5 and last year. They finally got a much-needed win, and I'm so happy for Lamar Jackson. I really am. He needed that win against the Titans. He got that win, and then I don't remember how the game went. They didn't show up. The Bills beat him 17-3. 19th total offense in the NFL last year, number seven in defense. The Ravens are always going to be top 10 in defense. Like I feel like for the next 50 years, they're going to be top 10 in defense. They're the number one rushing offense. They run an RPO like a bat out of hell. I mean, they, they, I mean, they just come out and they run it. You know they're going to run it. And they run it. Dead last in the league in, in passing offense. They're like 171 yards a game. That can't happen. J.K. Dobbins is still there. He averaged six yards per carry last year. With Mark Ingram gone, this guy is going to like, he's taking the load. I expect Jake, I don't know if he's going to have six yards per carry again this year. But he definitely handled his business. And you know they're going to come out running. If you're dead last in the league in offense, in passing offense. I think we all agree. You just got to get. You got to get Lamar Jackson more weapons. They did that in free agency. Sammy Watkins. I think the veteran presence. It helps. Willie Sneed's gone. Throw Sammy Watkins in the mix. They help protect Lamar Jackson. Offensive guard Kevin Zietler. Start him. They signed Alejandro Villanueva. Start him. Right after the trade. At the draft. With uh, Orlando Brown. Although I just can't understand why in the world, if you're the Baltimore Ravens, you trade Orlando Brown to the Kansas City Chiefs? That's the team you're going to have to beat in the AFC Championship game. You just gave up probably your best tackle. Anyways, they lose Mark Ingram. He gone to Houston. Matt Judon goes to the to the, uh, the Patriots. Matthew Judon led the team in sacks last year with six. Not a high number. Not an extremely high number. But nobody blitzes more than the Ravens. So even though they, their pressure rate's number one in the league, no matter how many sacks they have, they are pressuring the quarterback all game long. And they're trying to pressure them to get the ball out and throw it to that darn secondary that they have. In the draft, what do they do? They got Sammy Watkins. They go get Rashad Bateman. Minnesota, great pick, I think. They needed a bigger receiver to compliment for Marquise Brown, who was electrifying. It's just too small to be your number one guy. And I know Steve Smith and all of that, but Marquise Brown ain't no Steve Smith. You know what I mean? 32 wide receivers have been drafted in the Baltimore Ravens history. Only one of those 32 receivers drafted have gone over 1,000 yards, and that's Torrey Smith. So Rashad Bateman, ha it has, to, this ha Rashad Bateman it has to work out for him, and I think it will. They also go outside linebacker Odafe Owe. I just can't with these names, man. I can't with these names. They got weapons now. You got Dobbins, Mark Andrews, Bateman, Marquise Brown, Sammy Watkins, they have weapons. Let's go. Humphreys and Peters. Is it the best duo? Is this the best cornerback duo in the league? Quite possibly. And they got a pair of safeties that I want to talk about. They were both sixth rounders. Sixth round drafted safeties for Baltimore. Chuck Clark. And here's the guy right here that I think is the difference maker. Deshaun Elliott out of Texas. 2017 senior year. First team All-American. He had six interceptions in said year. Go look this dude up. If you do nothing else after watching this video, go look up Deshaun Elliott. This man can hit hard. This man tackles with form. He is sound. Great tackler. I think this is, and he probably gets overshadowed by Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters being on his squad. But this guy right here, fundamentally sound, as tough as they come. He laid out Derek Henry. Just go look that up on YouTube. This guy's throwing bombs. And I think this is the year that this pays off. This is his coming out party. I expect him to be, you know, I don't know, maybe all pro. Maybe all pro. I think maybe 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 a pro bowl. Maybe a pro bowl. It's a strong safety, and he's coming. He's coming. This team is back, and I, I, I do expect the offense to be much better. These guys got to at least get over 200 passing yards a game. That's a 30-yard and average difference per game. Just they got to get it done. And I do think they do. I think they go 13-4. and four. I think they go 13-4 and four and make the playoffs again. And maybe they can take that next step in the playoffs. Maybe they can get to the AFC Championship game. You're going to have to stay tuned for after all of this and find out. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining in and being with me here tonight. With my boy Kevin back there. Being here with me tonight. Watching these 2021 NFL Predictions, Boot Crew Media, all of the above. Follow me at Mike the Mike Bazaron if you're watching it on Instagram, Instagram, Twitter. We'll find it on the Facebook. 
Michael Evan Bajeron. I gave him my full name. That's probably not too good. But anyways, we're going to be coming back with the AFC uh, South next. We're coming back with the AFC South next. You're not going to want to miss that at all. I mean, I'm Jack. I'm Jack. And we're going two through eight. We only got two out of eight. Let's go. Hit the music.